It is a beautiful New Jersey morning here, folks. It is a shame that I am uh, on my way out of the state. We've got a six hour drive ahead of us here, 350 mile trek to a spot that I don't even know if there's fish, but I have an intuition that there could be some megas waiting for me a couple hundred miles away. So a couple days ago, I got back from doing a three day fishing send in Long Island, chasing a late spring, early summer bite up there for striped bass and bluefish. And I did have a bit of success as, uh, as you may have seen in a couple of videos before this, but I really did not have any true giant striped bass on that trip, nor did I have any giant striped bass really during the spring. So 10 months ago, I uh, was doing a similar thing. I left South Jersey on my way to Maine and I did 11 days on the road, fishing and car camping, exploring a bunch of new spots that I've never fished before, a bunch of new states that I've never really fished before. Now, very interestingly, towards the end of my trip in New England, I, uh, I was talking to a local there who mentioned report of a 58 inch striped bass, which is the biggest that I've ever heard of, especially by a land-based angler. So that is what this trip is all about, catching a true behemoth of a striped bass. I am in pursuit of hopefully my personal best striped bass, which currently stands at 47 inches. So I had nothing better to do in the beginning of the week here than I guess drive six hours and burn two tanks of gas. So stay tuned folks, this should be a hell of a send. I have three days cleared on my schedule that I can really fish balls to the wall and uh, hopefully we can end this trip with a trophy. For the next six hours, we're gonna stay glued on the road, pray to the fish gods, and uh, it should be an epic video. So we made it folks, this is the spot that I fished last summer where reportedly a 58 inch striped bass was caught. So I'm not gonna lie, after a six hour drive, I am a little bit nervous. The fact I just sent it up here with absolutely no report to fish a spot that I really know zero about and an area that I literally know zero about. But with that being said, our gear's over here. We just stopped by tackle shop, picked up some frozen mackerel right here, which we'll be using as bait today if we can't pick up any mackerel on the uh, little mackerel jig combo here. So as you can tell behind me here, I packed pretty light. It was actually about a mile hike through some intense brush just to get to this spot. The terrain here is just so, so gnarly. You've got a very deep drop off out there, just a couple miles offshore. It's 200 feet deep here. I'll be casting in the water 30 to 60 feet deep, depending on the tide here, which swings pretty violently. So with that being said, it's late afternoon right now. I really wasn't in any crazy rush to get out here because I have plenty of time set aside the next couple days. But I wanted to take advantage of the afternoon into sunset window here to see if there's even any fish here at all. Stripers are a migratory fish and very well could be that the uh, striped bass have just not reached um, this far north yet. So if that's the case, I'll have to relocate ASAP, but uh, there's only one way to find out if there's any fish here, and that's to go fishing. But one last thing before we jump into the video, I wanna give a huge shout out to the sponsor of today's video, the company making this whole trip possible, and that is No Surrender Gear, actually the manufacturer of the backpack that I'm wearing right now. So if you're a regular viewer of the channel, you actually would have seen this exact backpack in pretty much every one of my last videos. That's just because it really is such a useful backpack. No matter what the trip is, I always see me bringing this guy along for the ride. So today we've got it packed with cutting board, tripod, pliers, our hooks, swivels, leader material, and there are just so many storage options if you wanna get creative here. So in addition to the Echo backpack right here, no Surrender Gear actually makes a bunch of other products, whether you're fishing like I am, camping, hiking, skiing, snowboarding, whatever outdoor activity you're doing, they have something for you. So highly encourage checking out their website. And uh, if you wanna check out 
this backpack and their website in particular. By the end of the video, I'll put a little link in the description where you can check it out. So if you can support me, support the channel by supporting the companies that support me. So uh, with that being said, folks, let's get to fishing. Really is just such a beautiful spot though over here. This is structure that we definitely do not have in South Jersey. Just some incredibly carved out rocks here and it just drops off like this. So I don't plan on looking for bait long, but I figured it might be worth a couple casts here. Just gonna be throwing around this little mackerel rig I picked up from the tackle shop. Jig it around the rocks here, see if we can get any fresh or even live bait. Frozen stuff I'm sure will work, but fresh is always best. So give it a couple casts here, see if we can pick up some max. And uh, if not, we'll get right into bass fishing. Oh, oh, striper right there. No way. Shriver just came right in the wash right there. Okay, that was sick. I don't know why I jumped back. Shriver just came inches away from me right there. So that did not take any time at all. Unfortunately, no mackerel for us. A couple minutes we tried over there. I really wasn't expecting much. Maybe tomorrow I'll uh, invest a little more time and effort, maybe try another spot just to get bait. But um, there's fish here. <laughs> like three minutes into mackerel fishing, striped bass came cruising up right to my ankles right there in the wash. Nothing big with probably a uh, upper 20 inch is what it looked like. Really good sign to know there's fish here. I seriously cannot believe that happened. That is not what I expected to see out here at all. So cutting board out of the uh, No Surrender Gear backpack. Let's pop open our backpack cooler. And these are apparently fresh caught by the, uh, the tackle shop down here. I called looking for fresh mackerel. All they had were frozen, but they said they catch them off the boat and freeze them immediately. So hoping it works. It's not fresh mackerel or live mackerel. I don't want to try the head just yet. I feel like that's a bit aggressive. We're just going to stuff that guy in the rocks there. Now we're just going to get a nice little medium body chunk. That's our first bait of the day right there. Now in terms of actually rigging our bait, it's a very, very simple rig that I was taught when I was here last. And that's just a plain hook right here. I'm fishing 60 pound monofilament leader right now. And this is really just a big experiment to see what gets bit. So if this leader doesn't get bit, I uh, may have to go buy some new leader, probably maybe some lighter fluorocarbon, but you can see these rocks here are very aggressive. I do not want to run the risk of breaking off, especially when trying a leader and potentially big fish. So we've got five foot 60 pound mono right here, which is tied via an FG knot to our 40 pound braid. And uh, we're fishing this on our surf casting setup here because we are going to need some distance. We are going to need some power. And that's our VR150 here paired on a 11 foot Tsunami Airwave. Well, it used to be 11 foot. It's been uh, unfortunately recently trimmed down to maybe like a 10.6 right here. So a little heavier action. And uh, in terms of the exact hook we're using right here, we're fishing a 5.0 Gamagatsu inline circle hook, 4X strong. Let's take our mackerel chunk. Spate that through the body there. That's gonna be our first cast of the day. I know there's fish here. Now it's just a matter of if they want to bite or not. I saw that striper right here in the uh, in the wash. I want to cast out a little bit farther, see if there's anything actually a little farther out there. And um, we're just going to be freelining this to the bottom. First cast out. No idea what to expect right now. Let's see if we can come tight. Is that a fish? I think that is. Something. Something's on there. Grass, probably. Maybe an old lobster pot. What? Oh my gosh. No way I just caught that as my first catch of the day. <laughs> Dude, what? Well, I can confidently say I did not expect to catch that as my first catch of the day. <laughs> it's a little tiny lobster right there. That is so... So neat, dude. <laughs> Wish he was a little bigger than we could keep him, but that is awesome. All right, time to send him back. Hopefully not into the mouth of a hungry striped bass, but that is such a cool catch. Hey, dude. All right, not a striper, but that was uh, pretty neat. A freaking lobster. That was pretty cool. Maybe you northern guys have had that happen to you before, but I can confidently tell you uh, I never expected that to happen. We're not in Kansas anymore, baby. Well, there's some life down there. Saw a striped bass. Saw a guy catch a mackerel on the boat, uh, a little bit offshore, and uh, caught a lobster. The ocean's alive. Let's just see if we can get one of the uh, ones with fins. 
All right, another bait going out there. There we are. That bait's out there. I gotta move in. This tide's coming in quick. And that is some cold North Atlantic water right there. Oh, there's a fish. There was a fish on there. Oh, he's on there still. What the heck? No, a little, little Pollock. What the heck? All right, so yeah, another non-target species here. This time we caught a little Harbor Pollock. <laughs> And I mean a little harbor pollock. Caught a bunch of these guys up in Maine last year when I was fishing Acadia National Park in uh, in August, but I didn't catch one this far south. So um, I'm thinking what I'm gonna do. The, the mackerel is, uh, is definitely getting some life, pollock, lobster, but has not gotten us a bass yet. So I think this is the, uh, the hatch down there right now. And I see no reason why a striper wouldn't eat one of these guys. So I'm actually gonna chunk this bad boy up and recast it out there, so. Poor guy just got unlucky, bit the wrong hook. There we go. Well, see if that can get us our bass. All right. Pollock got picked clean off the hook. Time to go back to the mackerel. What just happened there? It felt like a bite though. Oh, yep, that's a bite. That's a fish. That's a fish right there. Is it a fish? Oh, he's gone, he's gone, he's gone. Damn, he's gone. No! Oh, that was the first legit bite all afternoon. That was the exact bite we were looking for though. Just dropping it, all of a sudden, spool started just empty. A soft hit wasn't anything crazy, but that was definitely a bigger fish. Either a bass or a small chance, but possibly a blue fish. Well, finally, five hours into our uh, fishing scent here. Just had our first proper bite. I've already cycled through three entire mackerel, plus that pollock we caught, and uh, really just been getting annihilated by small little bycatch species on the bottom there, but that was definitely a bass. It hit while the chunk was falling before it even got to the bottom and uh, just started ripping line. For some reason, the hook pulled. I am probably should have let him eat a little bit longer, I guess, or it uh, just might not have been that big of a fish. But either way, we know there's definitely some fish around. We just gotta figure out how to catch them. So that's a wrap here for day one of the New England Send. Definitely not the start. I was looking for when I left South Jersey this morning, but um, hey, that's fishing, can't always be hot. I've already been thinking about the game plan for tomorrow. That starts in just a couple hours here, so I am uh, absolutely wiped. It's been a very long day of travel, fishing. So I just made some room in the truck, opened up my uh, nighttime quarters back here. So I'm gonna get a quick three hour nap and then we'll be uh, back out on the prowl, but really hoping uh, things can turn around for us tomorrow, because right now, not looking good. All right, day two. So even though we were able to see a couple of striped bass yesterday and even some caught by other guys fishing the shoreline here, I had no luck in the five hours that I fished. So the water up here is way cleaner than I'm used to fishing. So I really just think these fish are gonna be a little more finicky than I'm used to. But with that being said, we've got the entire day ahead of us here. We've got beautiful overcast conditions, light wind. It's pretty warm out and uh, there is a front coming through later tonight into tomorrow, all of which are conditions that should get the fish biting. First cast, going out. Guy on the boat trolling out there too, probably trolling live mackerel around. Again, no doubt in my mind there's gonna be fish out here. Just a matter of if we can get one to bite. Something on here. Little pollock it looks like. Yep, baby pollock. That is bait right there, baby. If this gets bit, it'll definitely be a big fish. So, <laughs> sick little live bait right there. A little pollock there on the mackerel rig. Trying to find ourselves some fresh max for bait, but uh, that'll do just fine. There he is, fish on. Fish on, next cast. Catching all those little bait stealers down there. Another pollock. 
a little harbor pollock. Probably would be good bait, but we have enough right now. I much prefer the mackerel if we can get our hands on some. There he is. There he is, a rod. This is pretty fun, man. Another micro pollock. See you, dude. <laughs> now it's every cast. Two at once? Yeah. Double header on the pollock. This is funny. What if we get a proper one out there? Nice jumbo pollock would be sick. Went to New England, you got a lobster roll side. Disappointing midday update for us here, folks. As it is right now, we are in the car and we are about to drive two and a half hours south because this spot has just not been producing for us. And not just for me either. There was another guy fishing to my left who packed it up just before I packed it up. There were a couple of charter boats out fishing right along the same rocks that I was fishing and I saw we'll then pick up one striper on live mackerel. So I'm thinking if I had live mackerel, we probably would be able to come tight, but uh, yeah, really just pretty disappointing, but the sand can't end. So after this lobster roll, we are headed back on the road. I'll catch you in two more states. So here we are, 250 miles, three and a half hours later. We have teleported to our second spot of the day, and uh, it looks very good here. Way better than the last spot I fished. Just out there in the ocean, you probably can't see it behind me, but there is some National Geographic stuff going on. Birds working all over the place, literally probably 100 birds right there. And uh, there are plenty of boats fishing in close to shore. This spot right here is the textbook of structure, fishing a rocky ledge that just absolutely drops off right behind me right here. So we made a quick pit stop, or actually a couple quick pit stops on our way here inside of our bait bag now. We now have upgraded from frozen mackerels to some beautiful fresh bunkers. So I got two different bags here. I stopped at two different tackle shops. Whenever I'm fishing a new location or traveling, I always like to stop at more than one tackle shop just to see if the bait's bad at one shop. At least I can kind of average it out with the other. But uh, yeah, looks fishy here. We're all rigged up from this morning and from yesterday. So it's about damn time we catch a fish. Hopefully we can make it happen this evening. Let's get uh, rigged and ready, get some baits in the water and get some fish. Some guys fishing crabs over here. Oh, that cutting board. Seen some better days, tell you that. All right, these ones I'll throw back in here. Don't need all of them right now. Oh, check this out. Someone's doing exactly what I'm gonna do. They were uh, chunking for some big bass. Apparently, these are not called bunker, they are called pogies where I'm at. And uh, trying to get a bunker is pretty difficult when no one knows what you're talking about. Oh yeah, that looks freaking good. All right, so the technique for the day remains the same. Gonna be chunking, although instead of freelining mackerel chunks, we're gonna be bottom fishing now with uh, big old bunker chunks. I may try to throw out a free line, but we're in an area with a lot more current, a lot more swell. So it really might not be the best bet. So, uh, well, first bunker chunk going out here. Here goes nothing. Oh, let's hope this bad boy holds. Keep that drag nice and loose in case we get bit. All right, so there's our first rod. We are gonna try the free line a little bit here. But um, as far as this guy over here and what we could catch out here through the day, still looking for 
some big striped bass that is definitely number one on the bucket list but in addition to those we could be catching some big bluefish which are definitely around here this time of year see if we get bit it has been a grind of the past 36 hours i was tempted to drive home but here we are on some oceanside cliffs looking for a hail mary bite here All right, well, no bites yet on the chunk, but all of the activity that was a little bit farther out has uh, just decided to come push a little bit closer to shore here. There's fish blitzing like 100 yards offshore here. Not seeing anything too big, but I'm gonna switch off the free line here for a little pencil popper, and uh, maybe I can cast out there. There are maybe 100, 120 yards offshore, but uh, oh yeah, bass just blew up right there. Throw around a little uh, vanilla pencil popper here. See if we can't get one off the top. Got that wind at our back, which should help. Those fish are out freaking far, dude. Oh, I might hit him, actually. Oh, hell yeah. Same thing yesterday. I showed up to the spot. Didn't think there were any bass there. All of a sudden, I see one inches from my feet. About fish 36 hours. Couldn't catch one. Now, here they are. Hundreds of bass blowing up right in front of me. And I can't get them to get bit. Get there, get there, get there, get there. Oh my God, right behind me, dude. Right behind my bait. Oh, oh, we just got hit, just got hit. Just got hit, but he missed it. Throw it out of my mind, they'll eat this eventually. This cast here, this is the one. Come on. There he is, there he is. Got one, got one. Got a fish. All right, they like that rapid jerk right there. Oh, he just pulled us off. Just pulled, he just pulled. Still got our hooks, so he just pulled off there. Drag was fine. I don't know what happened, but they're they're chewing. Come on. Dude, they are exploding. Oh my God. The water is alive out there, man. Dude, there's dozens of fish rolling right next to my bait. Oh, oh, just hit it right there. There he is. Got him. Blew it out of the water, stopped it, paused it, and he came back for it. These aren't really big fish, but they are fish. All right, back to back cast there. That's sick. Now the fun part, I'm trying to land them here. All right, so that's what's out there. Big old ugly jumbo bluefish. See you, dude. So uh, plenty of fish blowing up out front there. I think there's probably some bass mixed in. That bluefish just uh, out aggressed everybody else in the school. But finally, after freaking two days in the water we caught our first fish there we go all right so the gopro died on that last fish there we had to actually flip him up here over all these jagged rocks now that we know there's hungry fish out there we should be able to catch them and uh again still looking for some big bass though gopro just died on that last fish there but we actually had to flip him up over these rocks good to see there's fish around good to finally kill that skunk but uh it's not really the target species you're looking for we're really a target size. If I get a big 20 pound bluefish, I'll be stoked. But for now, let's just keep on casting and uh, take advantage of this cliffside blitz. There he is. I'm on. I'm on. This guy's hooked up next to me. I don't know what he has. Whatever I got, it's pretty small. Oh, yeah. A little blue. That ain't that small. <laughs> you are not what I wanted, Mr. Bluefish. All right, there he is. A little bluefish. See you, dude. Hopefully there's some bass out there somewhere. There's fish all over the place here, though. Fish is a fish, though. I don't care if it's freaking blue gills blitzing. This is fun, and they're all right in front of me right here. Oh, there's a hit. There he is. Oh my God, almost took me off the rock. <laughs> there he is. A little bass. It is a bass. Yep, little striper. Cool, 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 cool.
there we are. A little striper. Now we're cliff fishing, baby. Just took some mega waves. Well, there we go. That is the target species I drove all this way for. Not the target size. That's like a little 20 inch rat right there that we're gonna send back. See you, dude. Boom. Head first, quick release, best way to do it. Without endangering myself or the fish next to that cliff. But uh, so, it looks like a mix of backs and blues out here right now in the middle of this rain blitz. Not what I uh, intended on when I left my house yesterday morning at six o'clock, but there's fish here and it's raining. Let's catch them. They're all over the place out here. Not seeing anything giant yet. I've seen a couple bigger, maybe slot size splashes, but no megas. I'm wet, fish are wet. We're all wet out here having a good old time. There he is. Jumped out on it right there. Oh, pulled on me. Back to back cast hookup. Most definitely are chewing out there right now. Really just love a nice sizable fish. So far, two bluefish, one little rat, diaper striper. Oh, just got hammered. Just got hammered. Oh, they're chewing now. It is tough to land these things though. I'll tell you that. Yeah, another little bass right there. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, man, I gotta watch out for that cliff there. These things will take me. Yeah, a little rat striper right there. There he is. Another little diaper striper right there. Things are barely even 20 inches. I mean, just absolutely dinks. I've seen some bigger splashes out there, but haven't hooked anything bigger yet, obviously. That's bass on back-to-back -back cast, though. Keep on casting. <laughs> this is sick. Well, fat lady sings. So there was even a third day this fishing send, which ended up being the slowest day of all. I woke up at three o'clock, marched my way back out onto the cliff rocks and uh, surf casted a couple hours in the morning there before I just decided to call it quits. This was one of the most challenging fishing sends I think I've ever gone on. Three days in my truck, exploring several states in pursuit of that giant striped bass, which unfortunately we really never connected with. And by the third day, I was just absolutely exhausted sleeping back here. In the cab of my truck, I had no energy left. I hadn't slept, ate, or connected with a big fish in days, so I was just absolutely wasted. But nonetheless, it was an awesome experience driving up to New England, exploring the uh, the surf fishing opportunities there. Even though the fishing wasn't as stellar as I had hoped for, I really did not have that much background knowledge going into this, besides a little bit of intuition. But even despite the lack of giant fish, we still ended up catching some cool fish, caught my first ever lobster off land, which was awesome, caught some cool pollock, and I did even end up catching some striped bass and some bluefish there uh, at the end of the send. But thank you all for tuning in this video. Thank you to No Surrender Gear for sponsoring this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this kind of travel vlog style video. Uh, I am back here in New Jersey, as you can tell right now, filming this outro in my truck, in my driveway. And there's gonna be a lot more local sends from here on out. So stay tuned for those. Again, thank you for tuning in this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed at least some part of it. If you made it all the way to this 30 minute outro, but uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. I'm going to stop rambling. It's been a long video as it is. Peace out. Stay stoked. See you in the next one. Never end the set, baby. You?